chain, chain, chain. Look out, baby. This is where, hey, this is the stop where y'all get off if you ain't got the, the, the guts to stand to see brutality and punishment. Hey, if you can't stand this kind of thing, beating on people with chains, if you're into chains, this is the thing you gotta watch. Because, hey, man, this is what it's all about. They are, they are locked together on this chain. You see that lock? He's actually locked. We got a lock on his wrist. The chain is wrapped around his wrist and locked on his wrist. Believe it or not. Can you believe that? Now, you can use this chain as a weapon in any way you see fit. Hey, if you aren't doing anything right now, go out to the garage and get a chain and bring it in the living room. And as we go along here, I'll give you instructions on how to use it. You know what I mean? I mean, tell your wife to run out and get you a chain. Hey, you might be able to beat the whole family up with a chain. How do you know? I mean, you know, you just, we're going to give you, a, this, is, this is a perfect uh, instruction, television instructional film here. How to beat on a person with a chain. Look at it. They're giving you a, the whole, right, wrap it around your fist real tight and just hit the guy in the face with it. That's it. Or hit him on the head like this. You see that? Billy Red Cloud, one of the great Indian wrestlers of all time. And he was a master at the chain match. Also, let me tell you, this other guy, Baron Von Raschke, the beast, beast of Berlin, he loved the chain. Hey, he loved chain. When he started out in the business, he was so mean and so rough. We used to have to chain him in his room to the corner so he could escape from the hotel or wherever he was staying and go out and hurt somebody. I mean, that's what we did with him. And he loved chain. Yeah, like little babies like the snuggle blankets. We throw a whole bunch of chains in the back of the car when we take him around and he could play with them. He loved chains. Yeah, and there was another guy who loved chains, and that was the ox. Hey, that's right, the ox loved chains. They were in the chains, man. And here you see a real rough and tough and tumble match because anything goes, anything goes. And that chain doesn't come loose. No, sir. That's the irony of it in the sense that as you keep, keep, keep getting beat on with that chain, I mean, you're trying to find relief. You're trying to take it off. You know, it's like two convicts escaping from the prison and they're chained together. You know, pretty soon they get ugly and they try to take the chain off, see? But they the run. Hmm, I think they made a movie like that. Anyway, let me tell you, this is rough and ready. This is rugged. This is tough as it gets. And look at that. Pretty boy, Bobby Heenan is at the ringside. Wait, I think it's over. I think it's over. He is here to wrestle the biggest and the best in the world, the biggest and the best wrestlers. Well, Jim, as you know, I've been traveling around all the United States. I've just recently returned from Japan. And I can't, I, I can't say that I do not have any love for Johnny Valentine. I've wrestled the man in Texas. I've wrestled him all over. The Super Destroyers here, Ivan Koloff. When I got to looking, and just probably the top talent in the whole United States right here in the Mid-Atlantic area, and uh, even a young guy, uh, uh, you mean Rick Flair? Rick Flair is down here. He's jipping in and jiving, chopping everybody, and the bounty hunter destroyer gets on TV and brags about putting a man out of wrestling, depriving him of making a livelihood, and uh, this is the kind of guys I want to wrestle. This is the kind of wrestlers I come in here Sometimes I think they might be a little sick in the head because they love, they love brutality as long as it's working on the other individual, but when the shoe's on the other foot and they're the ones that's getting hurt, they're the ones that's having to spend time out of wrestling healing up, that's when they start to scream, and that's what I'd like to do. I, I want to come here, I want to win, I want to make money, and I want to wrestle the best. And it's the way I see it, I can look any further. The best are right here. Well, Chief Wahoo, the name Chief Wahoo McDaniel strikes fear into a lot of people's eyes and hearts. I think the thing that it's not fear so much is they know that I'm a good athlete and when they wrestle me that I'm going to give 110 percent in the ring and if they make one mistake I do have the experience to beat them and that's what these wrestlers as great as they are every great wrestler 
has that moment where he lets his guard down. He makes one mistake, and that's when he gets pinned. And these guys, as great as they are, they cannot stand getting pinned because they'll no longer have that big reputation as being great. In the meantime, the Sheik takes Charlie Cook to the mat. The wild man from Syria who has the power of the reptile, he has a gigantic reptile he carries around with him. Master of the fire, hypnosis, has in his arsenal some of his favorite moves. Devastating. And it appears as though the Sheik has won the bout here because the referee has raised his hand in victory. It appears as though the Sheik has won the bout. He counted down an unfortunate Charlie Cook. The Sheik's going to win this one. Gary Hart's in the ring. Let me finish what I started to say a moment ago. The Sheik has that camel clutch, the mystical fire, and we've not seen any of that tonight. He did not use the camel clutch on Charlie Cook. Rather than that, he took him down, choked him down. He was counted out of this bout. Now... The Sheik in this vicious attack on Cook, and Cook has some friends stepping into the ring here. First of all, there's Scott Casey, along with Buddy Skip Young, and they're double teaming the Sheik now. The Sheik is taking a pounding. I told you, look at the look, look at the expression on this man's face. I told you about that hypnotic state, that hypnotic trance, and here's Scott Casey hitting him with everything he's got. Now, the Sheik doesn't even feel it. He doesn't even, it doesn't even phase the Sheik. He doesn't register at all. And now they've got three men on him. Now the referee's in there. Leo Seitz is in there trying to pull the, she uh, the Sheik off of Skip Young. And Scott Casey continues to hammer away on the Sheik. This guy, it doesn't even phase him. Now the referee's hitting him. Three men here. Four men actually in the ring and Gary Hart trying to stay out of the way. The Sheik told him, get out of my way. I don't need any help. Rather, he didn't say it. He motioned it to him because, you know, the Sheik doesn't do a whole lot of talking in that ring. Some Arabic, maybe. Now, the Sheik has Charlie Cook on the ropes. He's already been declared the winner, but he continues to devastate Cook. Scott Casey with a chair beckons the Sheik to the middle of the ring, and Gary Hart signaling to the referee to, to stop this, to send these guys to the dressing room. The bruiser starts for Bass as referee Dave Ferguson trying to get Sam out of the ring. And here he goes out of the ring. Thank you, Dick Bruiser. Dick the Bruiser, the roughest, toughest scoundrel to put on a pair of tights in that wrestling ring. Notorious by reputation. Being pounded from behind by Ron Fuller, the 6'9", 255, rugged young wrestler from Florida. Five minute mark just passed. We have 55 minutes to go. Sam Bass from over on the ringside tabs Dick the Bruiser several times while a referee back Dave Ferguson over to the other side of the ring. Here comes Bass up on the ring apron. Pops Dick the Bruiser one right upside the head and the Bruiser. Nails Fuller as well as Bass. And here he comes down on the floor after Sam Bass. The Bruiser picks up the chair that Bass was supposed to be sitting in. Starts up in the ring now and this is where Dick gets in trouble with referees. They take a dim view of bringing a chair into the ring and the Bruiser, ooh, and Ron Fuller catches the Bruiser from behind. Fuller nails a bruiser with the chair while referee Dave Ferguson is almost out of the ring. Fuller with a chair in his hand. He's still on the defense against the bruiser and here comes the bruiser. Ooh, right across the back. There goes the referee. Sam Bass flailed with that chair. And the bruiser cleans house. Ooh, he just caught Don Serrano. 
He just caught down Sereno and put him down outside the ring. And uh, I... I just come out here. I just come out here to wrestle. And this wild man is going ahead of his crowd. Attack me like that. Well, 